What's going on YouTube? This is Necros Fibo, and it's time for some VGC narrated Wi-Fi battle videos. Now I know I haven't uploaded in a while, life sometimes gets in the way as I always say, but that's okay. I have a triple header for you, that's right, a high Drygon header for you today. And all three of these battles are battles that I had from the uh, Pokemelborn tournament that was VGC style, and I was limiting myself to using one Pokemon from every generation, of course, and no Mega Pokemon. So I have here my Trick Room Malamar, Hariyama with Fake Out and Flame Orb, Life Orb, uh, Gengar, and of course Resto Chesto Rotom. Now I was looking at my opponent's team and how highly offensive it was based, and um, I already knew that Chris was a really, really good battler, so I was not going to sleep on him at all in this match in this tournament. Uh, I was using a little bit of unconventional things which worked to my advantage throughout the tournament as people didn't know what to expect from my Pokemon really. And that's something you should always take into account. Uh, experience can help a lot there because if you're using things people see all the time, it's easier to predict those things of course. Now in the first turn here I was not going to take chances. I knew Charizard a good 95% of the time just uses Protect when it Mega Evolves. And so I wanted to go for the Fake Out on the Charizard, I didn't had, any, had no reason not to. And I just go for a Trick Room knowing that everything on his team is fast. He has Garchomp, even if it's bulky, it's fast. He has Venusaur that's going to be in the sun, that's using Chlorophyll, that's also fast. So I, I, the only thing that I have that is fast is, of course, is my Gengar. So here I just uh, decided to go for the Rock Slide, try and hit the Charizard, but he smartly switches out. Um, he goes for Will-O-Wisp. I expected that, so I decided just to stay in, get my Lumberry burnt off there just so I could get some solid damage onto something. And now, uh, both of his Pokemon are kind of in the range where they can be uh, KO'd by Hariyama. And so here I decide to take out the Rotom, just because I don't want my Malamar burned. Um, and I go for Super Power on Garchomp, just to get the defensive boost. Since he lives that, he's definitely a more bulky build. But that's okay, he can't really KO either of my Pokemon with Garchomp, unless he gets a crit, the way he did right there. Uh, Hariyama is extremely bulky, especially with max HP. And that's not fat, guys. Even though it says thick fat, that is muscle. Hariyama can definitely take those hits. Now, the Trick Room, I have two more turns of, so I expected him to protect here to try to stall out my Trick Room. And that's exactly what he ends up doing. Um, and there's nothing that I could really do about it. I just decided to go for Overheat there, trying to hit the Venusaur. Here, I was fairly certain that he would switch back out into his Charizard. Uh, he goes for the Double Protect with his Garchomp. Does and he's unable to get it, which means I'm able to take it out before the Trick Room goes down. Which is really, really nice, if only because I don't have to deal with a Rock Slide from that thing. Now, I did expect him to switch out, but I wasn't that worried about it at the same time. A Sun Boosted Overheat is going to do a little bit of damage, and of course a Thunderbolt wouldn't take out a Charizard Y anyway, because I'm defensively invested and not offensively invested. And of course, I still have one Pokemon remaining, so I can definitely switch out here just to uh, reset the Special Attack Drop that I have. And unfortunately, I end up missing that overheat, which is just so very sad. Uh, sun boosted, even though I had the minus two special attack, would have definitely hurt that Venusaur. Since it's an offensive build, it uh, is not probably running as much HP, so I would have done a good 60-70% to it. Now, because I did hit the Charizard Y with the overheat last turn, sun boosted, or the turn before, I'm able to finish off with Gengar. And now that the sun is no longer up, Venusaur no longer outspeeds my Gengar, so this is very important. Just because now Venusaur can really only put one Pokemon to sleep, uh, unless he's running Petal Blizzard or, uh, I guess, Earthquake. Those are the only two things Venusaur really runs that can hit both things on the side of the field. And of course, Earthquake wouldn't hit either of my Pokemon, so... He puts Rotom back to sleep, but just because of the way I was able to play around at the beginning of the battle, I'm able to come out on top in this one, 2-0. So, that was a really good match in the first round, and these are two out of three, so the next round is coming up. Alrighty, so in match two of this tournament here, I think this was the, the quarterfinal actually, I did pretty well going into this tournament with this weird team. I decided to bring Lantern over Rotom Heat. I expected him not to bring Charizard and Venusaur actually, but he actually ends up opting to lead with Charizard and Venusaur this time. And not bringing Rotom Heat proves to be 
my downfall in this battle just because I have nothing for Charizard Y. I really didn't think he would bring it after he saw how well it handled his team last time. Now, once again, gonna go for Fake Out there. There's no reason not to. It keeps his Charizard honest and it stops him from going for that really powerful Heat Wave on turn one. And of course, now he's seen my team, so he has an idea what my Pokemon do. Uh, so, unfortunately, he's able to put my Gengar to sleep, and even more unfortunately, Gengar is going to stay asleep for a long time. Uh, and after the Giga Drain damage, the Flamethrower is going to be able to cleanly take out Hariyama, which may not have mattered since I'm not running Thick Fat. It, it may have just been a one-hit KO anyway. That's a really powerful hit. I decided to go for um, uh, Protect with my Lantern there, just trying to wake up with Gengar. And I actually do wake up. It just seemed, I was just like, please wake up, Gengar. I, I need you to wake up, buddy. But since I don't have any prior damage, really, besides a fake out on the Charizard, uh, I'm not able to take it out with a Thunderbolt, which is super unfortunate, because now he's just going to kind of run train on my team here. I needed this Charizard out of the way in order to do anything. And he is literally just able to just, he just KOs one of my Pokemon after the other. All because I didn't bring Rotom Heat. Uh, so I go for a little weak Confuse Ray there. <laughs> a little too little too late there. But that's okay. Um, sometimes the matches are really decided before you even choose your first move just by the Pokemon you bring. So, But that's okay. You know, here in the last match, of course, uh, I'm going to say that I learned my lesson. So let's go to the last battle here where I switch back to Rotom Heat, bringing the same four that I brought the first time. And of course he has Scrafty again. He didn't get to use it last time. Uh, so this is the third match. The winner of these of this match will be the one who proceeds on to the semifinals, I believe. Now, what we saw in the last match there was kind of just me bringing the wrong Pokemon, and so I did expect him to switch it up this round. And so to combat that, I uh, decided to go back to what I used the first round, and that works out because he brings Scrafty, which of course gives Malamar a boost uh, via Contrary. I'm going to hit the Rotom there just because I expected him to flinch my Malamar to stop me from setting up screens. And um, that's going to stop him from burning me turn one. So now I can set up screens. I mean, not screens, excuse me, Trick Room. I can set up my Trick Room. He actually goes for Drain Punch, which does not do that much damage. And I almost wipe him out with a minus one uh, Guts Boosted Close Combat. So I'm going to go ahead and go for Trick Room now. Uh, and I didn't really expect to be able to KO the Rotom, so I just went for Rock Slide to do a little bit of damage on both. Go for that flinch chance if, you know, if even if it's just a chance, you gotta play everything that you can to your favor. And now that I have plus two, even if he burns me, I'm gonna be at neutral attack and plus two defense. Or plus one defense, excuse me. So I do get burned. A little unfortunate there, but if he's carrying Garchomp, which I didn't know that he wasn't carrying it at this point, I was feeling pretty confident in my position in the battle. Charizard comes out here. I knew he was expecting me to rock slide, and I really could just go right out into my Rotom Heat here, expecting him to protect. And uh, I, I, I really was just like, okay, I need to play a little bit aggressive here because I don't really know what to expect from him. Now, I didn't really want to mess around with the Charizard, so I just decided to go straight for the Night Slash on it. I do get a critical hit, but that, in my opinion, it, it that just kind of makes up for things. But unfortunately, I kind of overpredict there. I really expected him to protect. Uh, and he doesn't do that. So, But I still have, I think, one turn of Trick Room after these protects here. So he's forced to use a double protect there to stall out my Trick Room. And that's fine with me, because now I can go for the Rock Slide. And of course, uh, he's going to be forced to switch out again. And his last Pokemon is Venusaur. So that actually is going to be pretty decent, because now that means... Um, my Hariyama could actually maybe do something here, of course. Just if for no other reason than because I have Rock Slide and he can't put me to sleep. So, unfortunately, I go for a Thunderbolt there. I, I kind of expected him to, to stay in. I don't know why. He didn't really have any reason to. Um, but now that he's coming back out here, I was hoping that he didn't have Heat Wave. If he had Heat Wave, it was going to spell some trouble for me. But he just goes for Double Protect for some reason, probably just to scout what I'm going to do. And I hear I show him that I have the Bullet Punch, and he was basically just stalling to let me die to my own burn. And I was expecting him to go for a double protect, but I over-predicted that turn. I really should have just used Rock Slide, because he goes for Overheat on Rotom, maybe predicting me to just go for a Bullet Punch again. If I had gone for Rock Slide right there, that definitely would have KO'd the Charizard, assuming it would have hit. Uh, so I just completely over-predicted right there, expecting him to go for a double protect there. I wanted to get a... Uh, uh, enough damage off. I, I figured the attack on Venusaur was really uh, on Hariyama was really obvious, 
and I'm not even able to KO the Venusaur with a Sludge Bomb there. So if I had used that Rock Slide, then not only would the Charizard would have died, but the Venusaur would have been at low enough HP that I would have been able to finish it off with the Sludge Bomb. So unfortunately, this is going to be the end here as my Gengar just kind of goes to sleep again. That's been the running theme in these battles here. At least his eyes are closed when he goes back to the Shadow Realm. I don't know. But anyways, though, I did enjoy those battles. I, I really was my own worst opponent in these matches here just because of my overpredictions and choosing the wrong Pokemon in match two. But they were fun. It, and, and challenging myself, the rules that I put on myself, to not use any Mega Pokemon, to use one Pokemon from every generation in my team, and to not use any Pokemon that I used in VGC before, was just a, a fun little miniature challenge for myself because it really got, it forced me to think outside the box, which means I was using things that my opponents didn't expect. So. And that allowed me the element of surprise, which led to me to, to getting in the the quarter finals in the match and then also making top cut. So I hope you all enjoyed these VGC matches, and um, I will talk to you all later. I'm currently in the throes of building my April Friendlies team, so if you all see me on Twitter talking about my April Friendly team, feel free to throw me some suggestions or Pokemon you'd like for me to use down there in the comments in the video. I'd be willing to take all suggestions there. I'm, I'm limiting myself to Mewtwo and Zygarde. Uh, for my legendaries, I could use Mewtwo, Zygarde, Xerneas, and Evil Tall, but that would be rather boring. So I'm um, limiting myself to those two legendaries and then having a little bit of fun with the rest of the team. So we'll see how that turns out, and hopefully I'll get to stream or at least post some of those matches when the friendly goes live in a couple of weeks here. In the meantime, you guys have a great week. Bye now.